Not you, though. Back in the day, keeping on God's good side was a big deal for wise guys. We racked up a lot of sins, and our life expectancy was anybody's guess, so you had to be ready. We had a guy, Father Santino, big into the Holy Trinity, also had a weakness for the Holy Trifecta. But he always lost, which I figured was God's way of saying, hey, what the fuck you doing? So he borrowed from me. And since Goodfellas never had time for church, this was a chance to bring church to us. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned like fucking crazy this week. The convenience was undeniable, especially when a gang war broke out. Hey, Father! Oh, crap, now I gotta go back in. It was all part of keeping a slate clean with the man upstairs. You confess to God, then the feds, you'd confess to anyone who'd listen, you rat fink stooly Judas! She's got a point, Jimmy. Shut up! But if you think I got anything juicy to confess since I moved to this unholy ice cube, forget about it! Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the couple with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all went in dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. Hey, everybody, guess what? I'm a hundred years old. That explains the dementia and the incontinence. And the dementia? I got a letter here from the Prime Minister congratulating me on my 100th birthday. Cheech, you're not that old. Think about it. When were you born? All I know is they found me in a Port Authority ladies' room stall sometime in June. Hmm, it's definitely from Ottawa. This must have something to do with your witness protection profile. You know, the files McCool gave us with our new identities? The ones we were supposed to commit to memory? <sighs> the ones he told us to guard with our lives. You mean the papers we used to prop up the wobbly toilet? Hey, I was born in a wobbly toilet. See, my file says I'm allergic to bananas. I'm not, but I avoid them to stay true to my new identity. And because they make me farty. Says here Teresa was born in newfound land. That place sounds totally made up. Yeah, well, says here Gina was adopted. I knew this rat bastard couldn't be my real father. I wish I was fake adopted. Oh, look, Jimmy. It says you and I met at a drive-thru. <gasps> I wonder where we got married. I wonder what we had. I hope it was burgers. No, it says we had tacos, and you finished mine. But there's nothing about our wedding. That's because Jimmy and Cookie McDougal never had one. <gasps> Page 37 in the appendix. You guys are listed as common law. Oh, oh. That's crazy! I don't even like tacos! <laughs> What's wrong with common law? It's progressive. So progressive, in fact, that you took Cookie's name, Jimmy. Uh, what was my maiden name? Kardashian Bin Laden Cosby. Yeah, no, McDougal's fine. It doesn't matter what our names are. We're both gonna burn in hell. But these are false identities. You still enjoy all the same legal rights as legitimately married couples. Ah! Sorry, that's a poor choice of words. If we're gonna live together under the same roof, we gotta get married in a Roman Catholic church, right where God, Jesus, and all the saints can see us. She's right. With all the things I've done, I'm walking a fine line with the man upstairs. God forbid, if Jimmy gets hit by a bus, I'll be left with an illegitimate bastard and two bastardettes! <laughs> I suppose a wedding couldn't hurt. It might even be fun. Perhaps I could help with some of the arrangements? Seeing as this unholy union of ours is your fault, you can arrange it all! Splendid! I'll get on it right away! Oh, Canada! We're living in sin! Ain't no sin at all! Hands off, Romeo. God's watching.
I was thinking, with Ma and Pop getting married again, someone has to be best man. Oh my God, what are you doing, Uncle Cheech? That's major Cheech to you, Private. And what does it look like I'm doing? It looks like you've been huffing my airplane glue again. I'm a hundred years old. What kind of man would I be if I never served my country? Pretty much the man you are. I ask myself not what I can do for my country, but what my country can do for me. This wouldn't be a ploy to get cheap beer at the Legion, would it? Bingo! I may not be a man of means, but I got a mean thirst. And Lord knows I earned it. Whoa! Ugh. I guess that didn't work out so well. It did! I got drunk, felt up a female amputee, and picked a fight with some Navy guys. They said to come back when I sober up. And you don't find any of this ethically troubling? I never had no trouble with ethnics. Rednecks, on the other hand, they're a pain in the ass. Now let's get back to base before curfew. Hoorah! Cookie McDougal, love of my life, will you marry me? Oh! Oh! oh, Jimmy, I didn't expect to get so choked up. Oh, here it comes. Third time's a charm, Jimmy. Oh, God. What'd you say, Cheech? I said, third time's the charm, Jimmy. I heard you, but what do you mean? Hey, he's talking out his ass, like always. No, I'm not. Third time's a charm. Means the third time you try something, it usually works out. I know what it means, but why'd you say it to Jimmy? He's probably been sniffing Petey's airplane glue again. Shut up! Cheech? Jimmy's proposing to you now. He proposed to you back in Brooklyn, and before that, he proposed to Marie. Ergo my ego, this is the third time. Need I draw a picture? Shut up, Cheech. Were you engaged when you met me? Now she gets it. In the military, they call this foobar. Means fucked up by a ring. What's the one way you get killed by your own men? Oh, that's getting fragged. You're about to get fragged, Cheech. And retreat! Cookie, where you going? You're making a big deal out of nothing. Being engaged and never telling me about it is nothing to you? Well, you never told me you were a stripper. You met me at a strip joint where I was stripping. Yeah, well, there's a difference between showing and telling. Now, come on back inside. I rented a tux for this. I don't need you and your secrets and lies. I don't need nothing from you. Now, can I please have the car keys? <laughs> ah! So is that a no? Is this a good time to discuss the seating plan? I heard a yes. Congratulations, Jimmy. <laughs> oh, you, Jimmy! Who? Oh, Eddie's Kowalski. Ow! Hey, the war's over, Johnson. Good bunch of fellas. Trust them with my life. Um, why is your sleeve pinned up? Cause I lost my arm at Iwo Jima. Or was it Korea? I wanna say Iraq, maybe. Drink up, it's on me. And the Canadian taxpayer. Cookie will come around, she's just confused and jealous. And wrong. I get confused and jealous. You don't see me throwing my skirt over my head and moving out. We do when you're drunk. She's just having trouble separating the before we met part with the after we met part. Which part are we in now? Oh, yeah, the drinking part. Barky, two more beers and a grape knee-high for Radar here. So, Ma, what are you gonna do now that you gave up your housewife job? I gotta figure out a way to be independent of that fat lion sack of shit father of yours who loves you very much. So, obviously, you're going back to being a stripper. Give me some credit. I wasn't a stripper. I was an exotic dancer. What's the difference? Pasties and a three-drink minimum. Girls, look, whatever happens, never forget. Your father and I both still love you very much. 
But now you're gonna compete for our allegiance, right? Who do we spend Christmas with? We get two Christmases, dumbass! I don't think Santa can be in two places at once, Gina. <laughs> Who names their store Bra Bra Bra? Uh, I'm too bored to even finish it. Actually, it's pronounced Bra 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 Bra. Oh, that's catchy. Can you direct me to your exotic dance wear? I hope I'm not being forward, but you should really consider the double-barreled blunder bust from Blender Bra. Here, I'll show you. For a rack like yours, it'll strike the perfect balance of lift and separation. There, you're locked, loaded, and looking good. Wow, the sleeping giants have awoken. You ought to hire her. That woman knows the way around a pair of tits. Cheech, did you by chance run into one of my teachers today? Affirmative. I was puking out front of the Legion, and we had ourselves a little chinwag. She invited me to talk to your school for Memory Day. Remembrance Day? Uncle Cheech, uh, permission to speak bluntly? I prefer English, but I'll try to follow. You have to stop posing as a veteran. Private, people need heroes. Someone to look up to, to remind them that freedom has a price. A price that can only be paid one beer at a time. Um, no. And what you're doing is reprehensible. Relax, I'll take care of the speech. You handle the moment of science. Did I say reprehensible? I meant completely insane! Her Oh, whatever this is, Cheech, I don't have time. Is Jimmy here? Someone needs to decide on invitations. Kobe rice paper or Venetian smooth? Everyone expects these things to just fall into place. Oh, and now I'm late for wedding band auditions. I'm this close to getting Loverboy back together. Hey, mister, quit cutting the line. Relax, lady. Do I look like I need a bra? Yeah, you do. And a girdle wouldn't hurt. <laughs> Cookie! Yo, cook! What do you want? I'm working here. Where, in here? <laughs> Get out of here, I'm busy. I went by your apartment. Gina says you're selling bras now? Yeah, and I'm doing real good at it. Look, I'm sorry you got jealous when you found out I was engaged. Now cut the crap and come home. How you doing? Why would I come home to someone who lies to me? I didn't tell you sooner because I knew you'd go all crazy. Apparently, I was right. Way to try to win me back, Jimmy. Now get out of here or I'll call security. Go ahead. I ain't leaving until you agree to be eternally bound to me in the eyes of God. Hey, that's not fair. Oh. <laughs> How am I supposed to fight back? <laughs> bra, 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 bra. May I help you? Oh, I think you're looking for bra, 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 bra. They're over on Dudney, but they suck. You should come here. Hello, Twinkie. Did Jimmy get laid off? It's okay. I'm sure your children don't need their mother anymore. Hey, Manabelle. Sorry, the washrooms are only for paying customers. I need a bra. Preferably not the tearaway kind you're accustomed to. Oh. You got what we call long-distance mm -hmm. cleavage. This bra will really bring the sisters together. Oh, I like it. It's made of memory foam, so you girls get that sleeping in their own beds feeling. <laughs> what the heck, Annabelle? No touching the lap dancer. I mean, bra fitter. I'm sorry. Uh, when you touched me, I... I had an orgasm. My husband hasn't been very affectionate lately. <laughs> How long is lately? Oh, who can keep track? I don't know. 168 days. Whoa! No wonder you're such a f***ing bitch. Tell you what, I'm off in 10 minutes. Let me buy you a box of wine. Just keep that tongue to yourself, hot lips. Finally, Jimmy, I'm so behind on the wedding plans, I can't even spare the time to rebuke you. Top priority, save the date cards, though I don't know the date or whom to send them to. Also, the DJ needs a song list or else it's all going to be new country. We're in the prairies, Jimmy. Get a hold of yourself, McCool. Change of plans. It's going to be an intimate ceremony where you get on the computer and make Cookie and me married. What? 
If Cook wants to leave me, she'll have to divorce me, which is a sin, so she won't. Bada boom. Happily ever after. Is this what Cookie wants? Who cares what she wants? Just make us married! Am I sensing some pre-wedding jitters here? It's perfectly natural to- She moved out and got a job. Sweet conscious uncoupling! She's your life partner, your soulmate, the mother of your children. I can't make you two married, only you can. By all that is holy, James Danger McDougal, go and win her back! Aw, oh, you really care about us, McCool. I'm touched. It's my special day, and it has to be perfect! Can you believe it? All these years, and he never mentioned he was engaged before. Shifty son of a bitch. So you don't keep secrets from Jimmy? No, I just lay it out there. If he doesn't like it, he can suck it. Oh, wait, there is one, but I'm embarrassed to say. Tell you what, I'll go first. I never told my husband that our oldest boy is not actually his. Oh, yeah? I mean, Ted is such a great dad, and Donnie loves him so much, and I... Oh, I can't destroy that because of one passionate night with Ted's father. <coughs> Jesus Christ, Annabelle! You had your father-in-law's baby? I know, I know. But see what I mean? Some secrets should really stay secret. So what's yours? I once had a reduction. Uh, and? Are you kidding? Jimmy'd never shut up if I told him. He'd be all, how could you do that to Betty and Veronica? He has names for my... Yeah, no, I get it. It's an honor to be here today. To remember those who fought so you little shits could have cell phones and open relationships. If it weren't for guys like me, Private Ryan, would still be lost. In which case, no goodwill hunting. You're welcome. Ward. There's no bowl of raspberries. Living in that sweaty jungle, Charlie breathing down your neck. What? But when Colonel Potter says, take Cheeseburger Hill, you take it. Do you mean Vietnam? Canada didn't go to Vietnam. In honor of this suspicious occasion, I went commando when I got dressed this morning. My soldiers need to breathe. For them that can't no more. And like the flag outside, I too am at half best. Oh, hey, who is this guy? All right, all right, everyone, shut your yaps. Let's get this minute of boring silence over with so we can go to the bar. <gasps> this fella's a phony. Yo, Bert, shut up. Have some respect for the fallen. He's not even a real amputee. Yes, I am. Ever heard of a phantom limb? Ooh, I'm the ghost of Cheech's arm. Let's get him! Oh, crap. I better fall back. <laughs> You'll never catch me, you old farts! My <laughs> Annabelle, honey, it's me. We need to talk. It's my husband. I called him to pick me up. You're out of wine. I'm sorry, sweetheart. It's just... I've been feeling self-conscious lately. And that's understandable. Ever since I put on this extra weight. Huh? Oh, Ted. I don't care about your weight. I love you, pudding guts. Mm -hmm. Let's go home. I'll get my coat. I'm Cookie, by the way. Uh, 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 sorry. Cookie! Cookie! Cozy. All right, put him up, you son of a bitch. You think you can fool around with my wife? What? No, Jimmy, it ain't what you think. Ah, oh, crap, sorry. I didn't realize you was, uh, what did Toby call it at the seminar? Differently abled. Oh, so you're cutting me a break, are you? <laughs> you don't cut me a break. I cut you one. 
<laughs> Want dance, motherfucker? Easy, platypus. <laughs> Boys, stop it! <laughs> Unfair. He's at such a disadvantage. I'm sorry. Jimmy can be a real caveman. No, I mean it's unfair that Ted's going to beat up your fat, out-of-shape ex. Okay, bonding's over. Get the fuck out of my apartment. <laughs> okay, you got a lucky one in. Ah! Oh! All right, fight music. A one, two, a one, two, three, four. Enough? I'm just getting started. I'll fight for that woman until you beat me so bad I can't remember who I am. My name's Timmy, right? Uh, uh, Cook? Is that you? You here? Of course I am, you big lug. And I'm ready to answer your question. It's yes, right? Please say you'll marry me. How hard did he kick you? That's a yes! Ow! God! <clears throat> yes, I got ordained. You try finding a Catholic priest willing to marry a couple living in sin with three children. The ring, Jimmy. My best man's got it. It fell inside my cast. Who wants to reach in and dig it out? For Christ's sake. Ah! Hey, this ain't my ring. That was my new piercing! <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? You know, back in the old days, you found out someone was getting whacked after it was done. You'd be all, hey, where's so and so? And everyone get all quiet like someone fought it. But with Cheech, I found out in advance. It was the day I had four root canals. Wise guys ain't big on dental work, but Cookie made me go. Mm. Word came down from Gambini. Cheech has got to die. Mm. Mm. But I forgot where he lives. I know, I'm a terrible friend. Now where is he so I can go kill him? Mm. 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 What'd he say? Quit stalling, Jimmy. I promise I'll make it quick and painless for him. Okay, only one of those is true. What language is that? Stroke victim? I was trying to plead for Cheech's life and explain that I'd just been to the dentist, but I couldn't get a word out. Ah, so this is where he is. There's a good boy, Jimmy. They didn't find Cheech, but they came away with something. <laughs> And that's why four out of five gangsters never go to the dentist. But if you think Canadian healthcare covers dental, forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds will say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. <laughs> then Mario says, Witch head, I got a suitcase full of them. <laughs> <laughs> I knew as much. As I settled in for an evening of whittling in CBC Radio, I heard a report of two rowdies causing a ruckus. Surprise, surprise, it's you two. We ain't drunk enough to cause no ruckus. <laughs> now we're ruckus. McCool, you know what your problem is? You don't know how to have fun. I certainly do. Why, just last week, I snowshoed across a barren, unforgiving tundra to go ice fish. Oh, very funny. Face it, you're boring. Boring, eh? We'll see about that. Barkeep, fix me three prancing mounties. 
What's that, a girly drink? Certainly not. Each ingredient of the Prancing Mountie is culled from Canada's finest fermenters and distillers. Plus seven ounces of 180 proof Jamaican rum. Yeah, girly drink. To Canada, where 0 .08 isn't the limit, it's the minimum. <laughs> oh, what happened last night? Where the hell am I? This place looks familiar. <laughs> Jimmy, how much did we drink? I don't know, it's a blur. I had a horrifying nightmare in which, for some reason, we left Regina and... <gasps> Holy balls! Joni Mitchell's paved paradise! We're in New York! Why are we in New York? You tell me! You're the detective! This is clearly some kind of fever dream brought on by last night's debauchery. Here's what I'll do. I'm going to will myself unconscious, and when I awaken, everything will be back to normal. McCool, that's nuts! You Ugh. can't... Morning, Jimbo. We really tied one on last night, huh? You made coffee? Do you know where we are? We're in New York. What are you, stupid? I had this nightmare that we were in some frozen crap hole in Canada. And our name was, get this, McGillicuddy. McDougal. <gasps> Oh my god, it's the Mountie from my dream! Wait, no, this is the dream! Or is it? What does that mean? This is the end of my career! I can't call for help, what would I say? I thought I'd take the Falcone boys to New York to reconnect them with the people who want them dead? <laughs> oh, lovely, that's probably work wondering where I am. So don't answer it! This is my work phone, I have to! No, you don't! <laughs> Special Agent Straight McCool. Oh, hello, Cookie. Thank God you answered. Jimmy went out for a beer last night and didn't come home. I'm so worried. What if something happened? I don't know what I'd do without him. Don't worry, Cookie. He's, uh, with me. He had a little too much fun last night. Oh, I'm so relieved. Now tell that useless fat f not to come staggering home until he sobered his ass up. Because I am not dealing with a giant, sweaty man-baby all day. Oh, and Cheech is also with me. Don't care. Jimmy, is this your old house? Yeah, it is. But how'd you know? <gasps> I added the last part. They always leave me out. Why do I have to help clean out the garage? I didn't do anything wrong. Mom found cigarette butts outside, so until the culprit comes forward, we're all paying for it. Only time I touch smokes is when I buy them more for reserve and sell them at the high school. Gina, that's wrong. If a 300% mock-up is wrong, I don't want to be right. Who's this guy with Mom? And why does he look like me? Maybe it's your twin brother. That's impossible. This guy's at least 20 years older than me. Besides, this is what happened to Petey's twin. Yum, 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 yum. Why would they make a flip book of that? Probably so you could do this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Eee, talk about shame eating. It would appear the parts of your house that haven't been vandalized and or used as a toilet have been converted into a veterinary clinic. That's because this is a mob doctor's office. Mob doctors are usually greedy, money-grubbing veterinarians. No kidding. 50 G's for a baboon heart, and I can barely climb stairs. Uh, I think the doctor is in. <gasps> Did you do this, Cheech? I didn't touch the guy. I leave him bloody, not naked. Well, I didn't do it. <clears throat> I have no idea what happened, but the good doctor is wearing my handcuffs. Attaboy, oh. McCool! Yes, we can congratulate my decline into degeneracy later, but right now we need to focus on getting out of here before... Doc, it's Leo. Open the door. Tutty got shot in the ass. Again. Oh, crap! It's the Gambini crew! Dino, kick it in. Good day, gentlemen. Oh, yo. Where's the regular Doc? I'm his, uh, brother? His brother, huh? And who are these guys? Uh, these are my interns. They're, uh, 
deaf and mute, so they won't be able to say a single word. Not a single word. Now, let's uh, get the patient into the, um, examining room. Jimmy, what's wrong with you? We're deaf and mute. Close your eyes. <laughs> Is the garage cleaned out yet, Smokey? <gasps> what the hell are you doing with that? I want to know who that is. That's... that's none of your business. Forget your saw it and do not bring it up in front of your father, you hear me? But who is he? Who is who? The man in the picture. What picture? I don't see any picture. There's no picture. Damn it, my ring came off. <laughs> See what you made me do, you nosy bastard! Shouldn't you clean any uh, potential obstructions around the abrasion collar of the contusion so he don't get necrotic fasciitis? I... I'm sorry, what? Shave his ass so head don't get in the hole! Oh, of course! You two, prep the patient. You're quite knowledgeable. I grew up around here. I've seen more shots in the ass than a Catholic altar boy. Look at these clowns, shaving asses for a living. Come on, Dino, let's go smoke. <laughs> Who's he calling a clown? Hey, I thought you was mute. Now he's the deaf one. Oh, so you are the mute? Exactly. Got it. Wait a minute. We could argue all day about who's mute and who's deaf, but we really should be focusing on your ass, Tootie. You, focus that razor on this man's ass. <sighs> Thanks, Cheech. No problem, Jimmy. You killed Gambini for me. It's the least I could do. <gasps> Jimmy! Guys, get in here! It's Jimmy Falcone! And Cheech, who do I gotta blow to get remembered around here? <laughs> Relax, gentlemen. Tutti had a reaction to the anesthetic. He's fine now. Well, what was all that about Jimmy Falcone? He's probably just upset about being in the man's former house. Wait a sec. How'd you know this was Jimmy's house? Well, no one breaks into a random residence and paints kill Jimmy Falcone on the wall. Just hearing that stinking rat's name makes me want to kill him and kill anyone he's with. And then kill a bunch of other people on account of being so keyed up. Come on, Dino. Let's go punch something. <laughs> Quit flopping around. I'm sorry to have to do this. Nice shot, McCool. I'll see if I can find us a way out of here. Cheech, put some stitches in Tootie's behind, will you? Why? What kind of pretend doctor would I be if I allowed this man to get necrotic fasciitis? Maron, look at all these drugs. Pick me! Pick me! Pick me! Don't worry, fellas. I'm gonna pick all of you. Yay! I found something. It's a long shot, but it might work. Follow me. Did you sew up the hole in his keister? Yeah, both of them. But there was only one. Oh. Who are you? How do you know my mom? And what was your major at Harvard? <gasps> of course! Y you're my father! And that's what I'd look like with boobs. This is never gonna work! What's the matter with you, McCool? It's all I could come up with, Jimmy. I'm a little stressed out, so cut me some slack! Okay, sorry. Where'd you find his get-up, anyway? Just inside the door of an escape tunnel in the basement. <gasps> Calgary Stampede! Let's go back! Where you going, Doc? Say, that's a nice animal. Wait a sec. I don't remember seeing no horse inside. Dino, shut up! What's the matter with you? He's a vet, you moron! Think this is why you still live in your mother's basement. Leo! You son of a bitch! Where the hell have you been? Ah, crap. It's Marie. <laughs> Remember Marie? There's a piece of work. F***ing shoot me now, Jimmy. What are you doing out here with these mooks? I bet you forgot our anniversary, didn't ya? Oh, baby. Of course not. I was, uh, just talking to the doc here about... 
your big surprise. I, uh, no, you weren't. Sure I was. I was explaining how if you didn't help me out, I'd put you and your fancy fucking horse in the East River in small packages. Oh, yes, that. Great! I'm back in New York and I don't even get to see it! Oh, smells like New York back here. Oh, so you're the one who was smoking, Teresa? You saw nothing. I guess it makes sense. Everyone in this family is a big fat liar. Who you calling fat? And who you calling a liar? Wait, no, I'll give you that one. Now I know why I don't fit in. Because the man in that picture is my real father. But you and Pop are so alike. <laughs> I can't even finish that. Maybe this needle thick is your father. Does that make Petey a bastard? Yeah, so nothing's changed. Mark all you want. I'm going to Harvard to find my dad. Ah! The guy graduated from Harvard. It's not like he lives there. Yeah, the only people who live at their schools are janitors and Harry Potters. I know, it's just a starting point in my search for my- Is somebody smoking? It's Petey. I knew it. Going to Harvard, bye. Ah, this is the slowest goddamn horse in New York. Somebody give him some hay or something. <gasps> Yo, Doc, what gives? Jesus H. Diefenbaker, did we steal a plane? Are uh, you killing my anniversary yet? Tell the horse to go faster, or someone's gonna be shaving your ass tonight. Help me out here! <gasps> what the hell's that? Horse stimulant from the vet's office. Jesus, Cheech, who finds random drugs and then just takes them? I do, Jimmy. It's called living. Yeah, well, don't get any big ideas. Ow! I don't feel nothing. I think that was a dud. <laughs> Hell of a thoroughbred you got there, Doc. That gives me an idea. That horse better come up a winner, or it's the glue factory for him, the cement shoe store for you, and the supermarket for me. Killing makes me hungry. I think we can totally do this. I think we can totally do this. Every moment of my life has led me to doing this. Let's do this. <laughs> It's a beautiful morning at Belmont. The sun is shining, the horses are ready, and the great Canadian invasion was a false alarm. I don't know what you did at the park, but do it again as soon as you hear the bell. We took speed. <laughs> Lots of speed. I never thought I'd say this, but thank God for illegal drugs. In gate five, we've got saucy buckets, and in gate six, we have obviously a pantomime horse. That's the horse's name, folks, not a description. It's a good name. The important thing is, did we have fun? And no, we did not. Damn it. I needed that money to buy my way out of this horrible life. What did you just say? I uh, said, uh, let's go put that stinking animal out of our misery. Yeah, that's what I thought you said. Ooh. So this is Harvard. I always wondered when you would realize the truth, my son. Father! <laughs> Come join my research team, Peter. I'm developing a pill that cures global warming. But how? It makes human flatulence refill holes in the ozone layer. You said flatulence. That's science for farts! Petey! Come home to Mama!
I'll be your mama. Okay. Peter Frampton McDougal, get off this bus right now! I want to meet my real father. Keep this up and I'll see to it you meet Jesus. Whoa, now, oh. come on. I always thought that if I died inside a horse, it would be more sexual. That's shaky Dino Bonzini. Guy can't shoot to save his life. Keep moving till he runs out of bullets. Hey, yo, Silver, keep still. Leo, you got to see this. You kill him yet? How do you like that? The horse has got moves. That gives me an idea. So, this is just a horse dancing for three hours? See what happens when you gloss over rehearsals? you think I'd have a kid with someone other than your father? Because I look so much like that guy. Ugh. He's your uncle. My brother, Paulie. The Brainiac. You have a brother? Why'd you keep him a secret from us? Your father put him through Harvard. But when he found out what Pop did for a living, Polly ratted him out on a two-bit gambling thing. Pop did a year in Attica. Oh, so obviously Polly's dead now. Jimmy let it slide as long as we never spoke of Polly again. You are definitely your father's son, mainly because you're both dopes. And because Polly got picked up exposing himself in the subway. What a sicko getting naked in public. Weren't you once a stripper? That was for money, which is socially acceptable. I told you the script needed work. We should have hired David Mamet. And have the horse saying f and sh all over the stage. No thanks. We got to retool. Maybe do out-of-town previews? Bottom line is, the horse is done. I'm replacing him with Nathan Lane. Obviously a pantomime horse. Your time is up. It's gonna be horse steaks tonight, boys! So this is how it ends. To be fair, I knew we were dead after Rex Reed's review. McCool, where you been? Not trying to get tickets for this debacle, I'll tell you that. But thank the Northern Lights, you're still alive. We won't be for long if you don't get us out of here. Boys, I owe you an apology. This escapade was clearly the result of my trying to prove I was fun. We owe you an apology. You're a freaking wild man. Yeah, this is the best time I've had in years. Of course, I can't remember that many years, but still. Thank you, gentlemen. That means a lot coming from you. All right, let's mop up the circle, jerk, because we're in big trouble. Buck up, boys. We're going back to Canada. Yeah, in a pine box. No, the same way we came, on the backs of prancing Mounties. I'm scared, Jimmy. Me too. Who knows where we could wind up? Where you been, Pop? I got drunk, dressed as a horse, ran for my life. You know, weekend stuff. I did some stupid stuff, too. You know what they say, Petey? If you like my father, then you'll like my son. That's not at all what they say. Whatever. You're the one with the brains. <laughs> Do I smell smoke? It's probably Petey! What's wrong with you? Don't you know smoke it'll kill you? All right, see you later, Broadway. And not a word of this to anyone, Jimmy. For Canada! Well, How you doing? I'm Jimmy Turncoat McDougal. I've been in Canada a while now, but there was a time when I was not so versed in its lame-ass ways. I'm confused. I thought Canada was a state, like Iowa, or South America. It's a separate country attached to the top of America. Like a bad toupee. Or a brain tumor. Hey, gang, I asked the mess hall to prepare some authentic Canadian cuisine in anticipation of our naturalization. Ew! This is a French-Canadian dish. It's French fries, cheese curds, and... Whoa, did you say cheese turds? Curds, like curds and whey, in Little Miss Muffet, 
I don't care who she is. She just murdered them french fries. And then someone blew a load all over them. What's the brown stuff? Looks like crap. Do they eat crap in Canada? They do not eat crap in Canada. So what do them Frenchies call this stuff? Uh, actually, it doesn't matter what it's called. Sure it does. Let's hear it. I don't want to say. Petey, you can't just roll out sh covered cheese fries and hold out on the name. Fine, it's called poutine. What was that? Uh, poutine. All right, it's called poutine. <laughs> <laughs> I rest my case. But it ain't all bad up here. They got this fluffy, delicious taste sensation called a beaver tail. Thanks, Petey. My pleasure. Boy, those sure went fast. I'm all over it. Get the maple syrup. We'll be licking tail and eating beaver in no time. Now that we live here in vagina, if you think we're above making a few obvious beaver jokes, forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all went in dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds will say they heard that they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. He's a big city lawyer. He's a West Coast beachcomber. Along with their wacky special needs canine, they're two men and half a dog. That looks terrible. Is it me? Or is everything up here a crappy imitation of stuff they do better in the States? Codswallop, Jimmy. Our culture is as strong as a California redwood. Uh, a BC redwood. <laughs> Here's a prime example, the Canadian Football League, a true original. Adding Canadian doesn't make it original, it just makes it suck. Well, Cheech seems to like it. Hey, there's one of Ryder Nation's more dedicated fans. I wonder if this guy could be any more green. Yes, yes he can, folks. Ooh. Hey, Jimmy! What are you doing? You're going to Canuck football games behind my back? I go to games, I go to rub and tugs, I lead a rich and varied life, Jimbo. It's like Invasion of the Body Snatchers. You're one of them, a Canadian. But it's great. Three downs instead of four, bigger field, faster, more exciting game. You're just jealous, because I'm assimilating better than you. Fine, I'll give it a shot. Can't be worse than Canadian TV. <laughs> What the f is a great cup? I don't know why they picked Petey to work at the TV station. Don't they want someone beautiful on camera? I'm just observing for my elective credit. I'm not actually on camera. Aw, too bad, said no one but me just now. And I can't remember why. Besides, ladies love journalists. Hopefully, they love guys who sit near them as well. I don't need to tell anyone with a pulse that this weekend, Regina is hosting the Grey Cup. That's the football championship named after the fourth Earl of Grey. No one gives a sh**. Due to Sarah McLaughlin harshing everyone's buzz at last year's game, Sunday's halftime show will be Hair Metal God's Snake Hammer. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! Call in now and sing your favorite Snake Hammer song for a chance to go to the game and meet the band. Awesome! <laughs> Nine, one, one. Nine, one, one, what's your emergency? I need snake hammer tickets! Great game, Bubba. We allowed in here? Sure, I just want to say hi to the boys. Jeez! Great game, fellas. Way to take it up the middle. That's how you pound the weak side. Nice ass, Billy. Fellas, this is my nephew, Jimmy. Oh, good to meet you. Thanks, uh, Dexter. Go on now. <laughs> that all you got, boy. <clears throat> <laughs> so, we on for Saturday, fellas? Damn straight, Cheech. I told the guys if we made it into the Great Cup, I'd take them all out for dinner. Forget that. You're all coming over to our place. Who's with me? Yeah! <laughs> Ha! 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 Ma! Someone's a 
about to butcher a song by that band you like. Among the many losers in our snake hammer contest, this next one's so awful, it can only be a sign of the coming apocalypse. You're gonna love this. They've been playing it all afternoon. It's a rainy night on the bar. I know, the right? Cats getting gutted butter. sound better than this. So kiss my ass. It's not that bad. What are you kidding? It's terror. Oh my god, so this is you. Ass. Don't you dare tell anyone that's me. That was Cookie McDougal. Oh. Cookie McDougal, you are a terrible singer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for fitting us into your busy schedule, Dexter. Hey, man, we play in the CFL. Someone say free food, we come running. And what a running game you guys got. We're going to need it against Toronto. That's a world-class city. How's that? You ever meet someone from Toronto? Within 30 seconds, they tell you they're from a world-class city. New Yorkers have a name for Toronto. Nice try. What's going on, Cook? Stereo's broken. Who wants more six alarm chili? No thanks. I'm a vegetarian. Don't worry, this ain't real meat. It's pigeon. <gasps> Did you say pigeon? It's good, huh? I use my seniors' discount at the dollar store. North Korea's finest. Oh, Christ! Jimmy, I don't feel so... <gasps> Are you kidding me? Pigeon meat? Oh, I suppose His Majesty would prefer Seagull, the rich man's pigeon. That's good luck. Saskatchewan's Great Cup dreams took a nightmarish turn today when the entire team fell violently ill. Nothing means anything anymore. I'm going home. Ah! Oh, I'm just supposed to be observing. Can I at least get some powder? <coughs> Football fans are gathered outside Wiscana Hospital on the eve of the Great Cup. Defensive tackle Dexter Mills urged Ryder Nation not to lose faith. Please, let me die. Sources suggest the team got food poisoning at this area home. Oh, wow, that's my house. N near that house where the bloodthirsty mob has gathered. Ah, uh, poor Jimmy can't catch a break. Jesus Christ, Chief! Ow! What the hell? Oh, sorry, Jimmy. I thought you was one of them nut jobs trying to get in. Ah! Ow! Good Lord! Jimmy, Cheech, what the heck? What are you doing in here, McCool? You should be outside getting them lunatics off my sidewalk. Jimmy, if you thought crossing the Mafia was dangerous, wait until Ryder Nation sobers up enough to get their hands on you. Excuse my French, but c'est un gros problème! I got no idea what you just said. Well, get used to it, because that's what you'll be hearing when I put you in double witness protection in Northern Quebec! Ooh, those guys hate Canada as much as we do. <gasps> If we forfeit, you die. Sincerely, the people of Saskatchewan. P.S. Sorry about the window. We enclosed a check for the cost of replacement. I think this is for you. No one politely threatens me. <laughs> Make sure he gets his ball back. <laughs> Great catch, Jimmy. <laughs> Great throw, McCool. Great chili, cheese. <laughs> McCool, excuse my French, but I ain't f***ing moving to Quebec. Ma, you gotta snap out of this. What? I can't hear ya. I can't hear anything. It's great. Ew, those are Cheech's sex pillows. <laughs> you can't hide here forever. 
This is the only place I'm safe from that freaking song! And those angry Snake Hammer fans outside! Don't worry, they're just here to kill Pop for wrecking the gay cup! Oh, that I song! Heart, Teresa, have I a heart! Put it on vibrate and fire. miss a call? Uh, Ma! <laughs> calm down! <gasps> oh, crap. <laughs> nice shirt. I got a truckload of them. What's your size? <laughs> Cheech and I assembled a team to take the rightest spot in a gray cup. <laughs> yes, of course you have. Very good. You do tickle my funny bone, Jimmy. I'm serious. This is the only chance we got to get people on our side. And to keep them from crapping in our mailbox. That's my toilet. <laughs> You'll be slaughtered. Like Cookie slaughtered that song on the radio. The alternative is we throw Cheech to the fans and they rip them to pieces. It's good to have options. Premier O'Shea's playing slot back. Mayor Schwashwa's tight end. There's one spot left to film a cool. And it's gotta be you. With your arm and my smarts, we can't lose. Would that I could, but I cannot. I once had a promising football career, but that was all before the injury. <laughs> a concussion so severe, for weeks I thought I was a late night talk show sidekick. So this football player walks into a bar. Ouch! hey -o! Who's with me? I'm sorry, gentlemen. I cannot risk another concussion to help you in this ludicrous endeavor. Fine, we'll do it without you. I'll be damned if the Grey Cup gets canceled on my watch. Give me a grand on the Argos. What do you mean, no? Screw you, Gina! Despite unseasonably warm minus 35 temperatures, the stands at Grey Cup are empty. Regina will be out to forfeit momentarily, so I will have the evening free. Ladies. Wait! A group of middle-aged men posing as the Rough Riders are taking the field. And here come the Toronto Argonauts! World Class City! World Class City! World Class City! World Class City! Bet you wish you ate my chili now. Oh boy, my dad is screwed. Okay, so they're big. Does that make them better than us? Yes! So they're pro athletes. Does that make them better than us? Yes! So they're highly skilled. Hang on, let me rethink this. But I knew most of the answers. When you guys are out there getting pulverized, I want you to remember what we're playing for. Endorsement deals? Right of pride! We're not gonna stand by and be the first team to ever forfeit a Grey Cup! Who's with me? <laughs> Bit of a mixed message, but I'll take it! Hey, lady, what you doing with my mother? I am your mother, Gina, and it's time I started acting like it. Is this about that horrible song, Ma? Because if it is, you're overreacting. Snake Hammer was fine when I was in my teens, but I'm a grown-up lady now, and you know what it says in the Bible. Oh, oh, wait, I notice. Uh, Jesus throws a big dinner party? Yeah, and one of the Jonas brothers betrays him for 30 peanuts of silver. No, it says you have to put away childish things, like rock albums and hopes and dreams. And you two are so going to Bible camp. Ma, you think you're a failure, but you've gone viral. That was 20 years ago, and penicillin took care of it. No, no, like that video of the toddler with the shotgun, or the girl who plays trumpet with her butt. Flattering as that is, I think I'm gonna stick to being an adult from now on. No more snake hammer. Oh my god, is he copperhead from snake hammer? I'm looking for the chick who mangled our song. Here she is. World Class City! <laughs> okay, so far so good. It's our ball and nobody's dead. Come on, Jimmy, let me be quarterback. Shut up, I'm quarterback. But I got this play worked out. It's a sure thing. <laughs> Hey. 
You'll never see it coming. Let's keep that one in our back pockets for later. Yeah! 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 You weren't going to start this party without me, were you? What changed your mind? You did, Jimmy. You stood tall while others kneeled in front of the toilet, yakking their guts out. Come here, you crazy son of a bitch. <laughs> if you guys are done choking each other's chickens, we got some football to play. Your call, McCool. Fast and loose on two. Hey! Okay, McCool? Is your conditioner making you impotent? Find out after the break. And we're back. This Rider B Squad sure has heart. In fact, I see one of their hearts on the field now. And an Argo player just ate it. There's a hearty meal, am I right? You're not supposed to be up here. Terrific. Lucky we still got this guy, the only Rough Rider you didn't almost kill with your chili. Cause he's a vegetable. You mean vegetarian. Hi! <laughs> now he's a vegetable. At the half, the stadium appears to be filling up as fans get behind this ragtag bunch. Or maybe they're just here for Snake Hammer. I hear the lead singer had a few too many backstage. He got snake hammered. Is this thing on? <laughs> Sometimes in life, you take a few knocks, but you gotta get back up and give what you got. This little lady right here took a beat and didn't let it get her down. Put your hands together for Cookie! It's a rainy night on the boulevard. My socks are squishy, my life is hot. My nose is runny, but I'm a fighter. Kiss my ass and raise your life. Good for you, Cook. Good for you. <laughs> We're done, Jimmy. It's time to throw in the towel. I'll do it. Just show me where they keep the towels. You want to give up? Lie down and die like stinking dogs? No, I just want to go home. Why are you going to make us sound so ugly? Those people out there are starting to believe in us. We give up now. We're giving up on them and ourselves. And all the kids who dream of playing in a league full of guys who couldn't cut it in the NFL. Those Argo nutsacks got you believing that you ain't good enough that you ain't world-class. Well, I say they're wrong. And if you agree with me, I'll see you on the field. Who's with me? So, we going for ribs or what? <sighs> and we're back for the second half. Wow, my mom performed at halftime, my dad's on the team. Which one'd you blow to get this job? Hey! Pay yourself, give me something I can use. I'm dying here. Jimmy! Cheech! My speech worked? God, no. You're my right home. Let's hit him where it hurts. It's time to get in their heads. How do we do that? Tiny submarine? World class city! No, here's what we're gonna do. Yo, number 10. It's the NFL calling for you. <laughs> Really? Nah, of course not, you fing suck. <laughs> hey! <laughs> so, when's the last time Toronto hosted the Olympics? Well, oh, never, but we had the Pan Am Games. Hey! Pan Am Games? That's cute. Two subway lines? You're about as world class as Cleveland. Hey! hey. <laughs> This gutsy performance has brought Rider Nation back. It doesn't get more exciting than this. I am so hard right now. Hey, world-class shit. Is the CN Tower still the tallest building in the world? Well, no, but... I'm 
feeling something, Cheech. Something I ain't felt since we moved up here. Internal bleeding? No, it's pride. All right, let's finish this. Hey, nuts. How many years since the Leafs won the cup? <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't someone tell him we lost? Sure, we lost, but look at Toronto. They're miserable. World class city! World class city! Come on, guys! World class city! Shut up, Doug. But Jimmy, we still lost the game. So what? It's a, what do you call it? Moral victory. But we lost! It's not about winning or losing. It's how you play the game. Oh, God. You're one of them. You turned Canadian. <gasps> Don't forget, tonight's game will be followed by the second and final episode of Two Men and Half a Dog. I love that show. How you doing? Jimmy here. You know my story by now. Most of it's even true. Thing about wise guys is we hardly ever told the truth. By hardly ever, I mean mostly never. We lied to everyone. Cops, judges, our wives, and mostly each other. We lied so much, we didn't even know we were doing it. Yo, Jimmy, these biscotti got almonds in them? Nah, don't worry about it. You need a doctor? No, I'm good. Lying came so easy that the truth was frowned on. Like the time Johnny Forthright came to town. Hey, Jimmy, with that gut, you're begging for a heart attack. Now, there's a reason wise guys never tell the truth. Because who wants to hear that crap? Then Johnny comes along with his mouth, and suddenly I'm so worried about my weight, I had what my doctor called a mild cardiac incident. <laughs> Once I got out of the hospital, I reminded Johnny that the truth hurts. Then I... Did not wipe the sidewalk with his face. <laughs> anyway, now that I'm in witness protection, I'm still living a lie. Except this one's legit. And you've never looked slimmer. What? Goodfellas ain't the only ones who can lie their freaking asses off. Ho! Oh, forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds will say they heard that they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. Blue Tiger, you clear? Clear. Take the shot! Take the shot! Who is it? P pizza? Oh, if someone ordered pizza this late, it's their ass! They didn't order pizza. Repeat, did not order pizza. Pull back, send in the robot! <laughs> It's Halloween already? What the f are you supposed to be, kid? Ooh. He didn't take delivery! Go, 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 go! Jimmy McDougal, you've been duly served! Fifteen guys in a freaking toaster to serve a summons? Can't take any chances, sir. Not since last year's potty mouth incident. You Canucks are pussies. Gah! Harsh language alert! Fall back! Run! I don't remember getting these tickets. Public urination, drunken disorderly, Dunkin' Donuts. Oh, that's a receipt. Six grand in parking fines? Ooh. Not so fast, Cheech. Did you get these tickets and use my name? Yeah, but don't worry. I burned them all. Remember? The whole garage went up. That was you? Technically, it was the oily rags that I tossed the burning tickets onto. Do you gotta wreck everything you touch? Yeah, like the skylight he tried to put in the bathroom? The fresh air helps me go. Or the ceiling fan he installed last- 
So I goofed up. It happens. It happens every day with you, you bum! bum. <gasps> Who are you calling a bum? I'm calling you a bum, Cheech. You ruined my old life, and you're mooshing a new one. And you know why? Because you're a screw-up, and you're a bum! And that's the truth of you. Cheech, you okay? <laughs> I'm fine. It'll take more than that to bring old Cheech down. <laughs> How could they say the things about me? I'm not some kind of moron. I know. I'll pay the tickets. Jimmy will lend me the money. All right, he thinks I'm a bum. <gasps> Maybe they're right. What good am I to anyone? Help! My husband's trapped in that fire! Shut up! I'm trying to think here. Ma, you gotta sign this so I can get vaccinated at school. You can't let him pump Gina full of autism juice. Uh, the link between vaccines and autism has been roundly rejected by the medical community. Ooh, the medical community. What about the community of celebrities who know how to raise perfect kids? Yeah, Petey. If they didn't know what they were talking about, they wouldn't be published in the pages of Celebrity Minutia magazine. But they won't let me go to school if I don't get them shots. Then I'll learn you at home. I'm not taking chances with your health. But you'll risk her catching rubella or whooping cough? Oh, don't make up diseases, Petey. Cool! I got you out of school. You're welcome. What you don't get, Brainiac, is when I miss school, I lose business. And when I lose business, I get dark impulses. So you're gonna take care of my business. What's in it for me? I won't break your nose. Throw in my arm, and you got a deal. Wakey, wakey! Canada has plenty of freshly painted substandard housing for people like you. Move along, my downtrodden friend. Just soak me in gas and light a match, Mukul. Mordecai Richler's legacy, Cheech. This isn't about Jimmy's parking tickets, is it? Sure is. Could you pull a little magic act and make them vanish for me? One can't simply vanish parking tickets. One pays them. And if one is so inclined, one pays them in advance. This one guy sounds like a jagoff. Could a jagoff do this? Who? Now do that 6,000 more times. It's a bus token, Cheech. You could always go to City Hall and fight those tickets. It's your right as an honest citizen. Well, citizen. I'll do it. I represented myself in court for littering once. Talked them down to a six-year stretch. Then I'll leave it in your marginally capable hands. For Canada, where we still believe in magic! <sighs> Looks like someone misses Cheech. Me? Miss that bum? Not a chance. Why, did he call? Not that I care. If he called, I tell him to go back to Bumtown or wherever he's been for the last couple of days. Did he call? No. I'm going to bed. You stay here, pretending you don't regret the awful things you said to him. Pop, this is weird. It ruins it if you talk! <laughs> Hey, is your boss around, sweetheart? I gotta talk to him about some tickets. Whoa, well, Lady Mayor. How about we ram a few motions through your council chamber? I was thinking, Your Honor, since I did you a favor, Three by my count. Maybe you could do one for... <gasps> Maron. Oh, sweet lady. She died doing what she loved. Screwing the people. I'm worried. I said some completely accurate things to Cheech that he totally took the right way, and I ain't seen him since. Last I saw, he was filled with vim and vigor, ready to fight those tickets in court. So don't worry, Jimmy. Jimmy! Cheech! Great news! You paid the tickets! No! I'm running for mayor! Rob Ford's big red face! I did not see that coming. 
And you're sure the mayor was alive during your octogenarian boot knocking? I may be a lot of things, but I ain't no necropelagic. All right, then. It was natural causes. More or less natural. But you running for her job is out of the question. Especially over parking tickets. It's more than that. I gotta do something with my life before it's too late. So I'm running, McCool. Running like a cokehead's nose. Get ready to catch a serious dose of election fever because the mayor is dead. Oh, that's good copy, Carl. Oh, the candidates throwing their hat into the ring include Premier Mickey O'Shea, who's running on a why the hell not platform, former strip joint manager Pierre Le Chouachoua, who's French, <laughs> as if, and area man Cheech McDougal, who promised pizza Fridays every day of the week. What do you think of me now? You were drunk and you didn't finish high school. I think you got a shot. Are you insane? Witness protection rules strictly forbid running for office. So kick me out. When I'm mayor, I'll have a whole police force to protect me. And get me lunch. I get you're excited, but there's no way in hell you can run for mayor. All right, then. Strange. Neither of us tried to stop him. I had no confidence in that fan. What's your excuse? Wow, you just say Gina's name and they shower you with money. <gasps> Here, I'll take care of that. I'm the substitution teacher. And I'm a nurse. I bet none of you want to get a big old dangerous needle, do ya? Uh-uh. I think I found my calling. Saving the children. Please don't touch me. Why are you here? I skipped work. Me and McCool are taking Cheech out to cheer him up. What are you doing? Ma's homeschooling me because I ain't vaccinated. After this, I gotta unload the dishwasher for home ec. Is Cheech ready to go see some strippers? Oh, hello, Gina. Cheech said he was going to the election rally. I guess he meant erection. Election rally? Jimmy, let's go! Gina! Time for gym class! We're playing Hang the Laundry! Aye. Schwa schwa economic growth, schwa schwa anglophone pigs. What do you think Cheech is up to? God willing, a public withdrawal. Sounds dirty. <gasps> I'm not one for long speeches, so thank you and goodbye. Oh, wait, I forgot the thing. Hang on, watch this. Not tonight, honey. I have a, oh, I just don't love you anymore. That's marriage for you. But don't worry, pal. I got you covered. Hi, I'm Cheech McDougal. I've been all over this great city. Well, maybe not great. Face it, it's a shithole. Anyway, I've been talking to folks all over Vagina. And while I can't remember any of them conversations, I know what people want. And that's... Uh, sex. If you're poor or ugly, which is most of you, sex is hard to come by. But not anymore. Today, I give you the Affordable Orgasm Act. Hey! Don't worry. Under my universal prostitution plan, the government pays for it. In that case, can I have one too? You bet your ass you can. And on election day, bet your ass on me. I'm Cheech McDougal, and I approve these wars. I know what you're gonna say, but I was on my way to quit when the mailman showed up. Mail person, we're in Canada. Nah, I'm pretty sure Gloria's a man. Anyway, he had this bag full of donations for my campaign. The people have spoken, and they want me. You sure you heard him right? For the first time in my life, I'm not screwing up. I'm getting it right. And I owe it all to you. What? You gave me the kick in the pills I needed. You're not just my nephew, Jimbo. You're my best friend. 
Hey, one more thing, Paisan. Can you tell Chiefs, this is a hairpiece? Chiefs, Chiefs, Chiefs. And that is why eating mashed up insects is good for the environment and your complexion. Someone's gonna have a healthy glow tomorrow. <coughs> oh no, you're all getting sick. Thanks a lot, GMOs. Okay, everyone eat these donkey placentas. They ward off sickness and dark forest fairies. Waldo, make sure to chew. <laughs> oh! My superiors are threatening to have a beaver chew me a new one. It's a little consolation that I get to choose the beaver. No one back home is gonna mistake that Elvis looking huggy bear for Cheech Falcone. Besides, there's no way he's gonna win. Yeah, what's the harm in letting him lose? It'll be good for his self esteem. But the opposing candidates will make mincemeat out of him. Come on, Canuck politicians don't take the gloves off like they do down south, do they? You tell me. This footage provided by the O'Shea for Mayor Committee was filmed at a Cheech McDougal campaign stop. Of course I'm a feminist. My dinner ain't gonna cook itself. What the hell's an LGBTQ? Some kind of fucking sandwich? But if I slip one past the goalie, then I'm pro-choice. Hey, are you filming this? Yeah, now the kids can see me do this in one snort. See, McCool? He don't need to quit. His big mouth's gonna mess this up. Public reaction to the Cheech McDougal footage has been swift. I like Cheech. You really know what you're getting with him. Yeah, he speaks his mind. Like, it's confusing, but like, he speaks it. <laughs> it's high time we got our own sandwich. McDougal's numbers have soared, giving him- What is wrong with these people? This video is just the beginning. They're going to dig into Cheetah's past, and do you know what they'll find? A lot of dead bodies? A man who, up until a few months ago, did not even exist! Yeah. I have been digging into Cheech McDougal's past. Whoa! I got no idea who you are, but McCool was just talking about you! You come alone. My wife usually helps me, but that's not what you meant. I cannot schwa reveal my schwa schwa identity, schwa. Come on out, schwa schwa. How did you schwa schwa it was me, Monsieur Jimmy? Call it a hunch. I did some digging on Monsieur Cheech. What I found was most schwa schwa. <laughs> Cheech forgot to sign his nomination papers. Even if he wins, he cannot be mayor, Schwa. His campaign is as illegitimate as my Schwa Schwa children. <laughs> Can you imagine? He had it in his grasp, and he schwa it up. <laughs> so you're blackmailing us? Eh, mais no, no, I like you guys. I give Monsieur Cheech the Schwa to save himself from the suicide-inducing embarrassment of this blunder. Nice of you. Thanks. If it were me, I would light myself on fire and schwa in front of a train. <laughs> yeah, I get it. He's a dope. Then no one would have to schwa upon my corpse and say, here lies the stupidest schwa on earth. Okay, enough. Uh, so, uh, can I schwa on your vote next Tuesday? Now that Cheech is ineligible to run, we're in the clear, Jimmy. Why the frown? Because I still got to break the news to the guy. So what? It's his own fault. Exactly. I called him a bum and a screw-up, and it almost destroyed him. If I tell him he screwed this up, I don't know what he'll do. Hopefully kill himself. In the old life, you were never supposed to truth someone. What if I truthed all you guys? What if I told Petey sometimes I want to punch him in the face for being such a goofy little know-it-all? Or if I let McCool know I think his horse has more personality than he does? Suppose I told Gina here that Therese is actually my favorite. Or if I told Cookie... Watch it! <laughs> I gotta let Cheech down easy. Make him think quitting is his idea. This is gonna be harder than sitting through a Canadian movie. At least at the end, I'll know what happened. But depressing, confusing cinema no one cares for is our national heritage. So watch out for Big Palma. They want us to waste money on medicine and cheese when we should really be using it to make sure blockbuster movies have solid opening weekends. <gasps> Run! Big Palma! I didn't teach you 
kids. You taught me. Oh. Hey, can we stop by the office? I want to get a reference. <laughs> Hey, Jimmy, you want a lucky rabbit's foot for election day? No, nah, I'm good. So, you gonna pack your bags? What for? Come next week, we're all moving to the mayor's mansion. Hey, bring a chainsaw. That place needs more skylights. Pack your bags. Pack your bags. Pack your bags. bags. Hey, actually, pal, we are moving. Now that you're gonna be mayor, McCool's relocating us. Uh, I don't think they'll let me be mayor from some other town. No. You're staying here, and I can't even tell you where we're going because you're not in witness protection no more. Anyhow, I came to say goodbye. You're gonna make the best mayor this town has ever seen. And from what I hear, the youngest. You're leaving? I'll never see you, Cookie, Teresa, Gina, or what's-his-face again? Yeah. Sorry. But I got everyone rabbit's foots. <laughs> Okay, shut up! Seriously, shut the f up! I can't do this. Being mayor means I lose my family, so I'm out. Ah, he's a family man. Besides, all I'm gonna do is fleece the city dry, then burn the joint down for the insurance. But they'll still be free prostitutes, right? Yeah, for me. Don't you get it? Just cause you like me is no reason to vote for me. I got no idea what I'm doing. Outside of robbing you assholes blind. <gasps> Finally an honest politician. Chance, chance, chance! It's like chance, talking to chance, a wall. Chance, all right, chance, that's it. Chance, chance, I gotta break all of your stuff. Come here, you! Chance, <laughs> oh, you want one? All right, stop smiling. Yeah. Hey, buddy, get out of the way. I'm trying to hit your wife. <laughs> They just kept cheering for me, even when I had a handicapped kid in a headlock. No offense, but voters are stupid. Hey, the election results are in. Pierre Le Chua Chua narrowly edged out Mickey O'Shea to become the next mayor of Regina. That crazy Puerto Rican wants to keep universal prostitution alive. I gotta get a taste. I wrote that legislation. I'm sorry I truthed you, Cheech. It's okay. Just do me a favor and we're even. Help me pry this rug off. I stuck it on with hot glue. <gasps> Yo, Airhead, you got my money? No, but I have blisters on my tongue when I think I pooped a kidney. That's it. I don't care what Hollywood says. We're getting our shots. Kids, roll up your sleeves. McCool, drop your pants. But I have all my shots. I said drop them. How you doing? I'm Jimmy Falcone. I used to be part of a crime family in New York, and like any father, I wanted to see if my son was cut out for the family business. But you can't just jump into extortion, racketeering, and murder. You gotta take baby steps. See that guy delivering papers on your block, your turf? Don't you want a piece of that action? Go. Uh, there you go. Look out. Oh. He's supposed to beat the kid up and take his money. What's he doing? He's working, Jimmy. Makes me sick. Okay, so we find someone weaker. Build the kid's confidence. See that old deadbeat? He's behind on his payments. Take care of him. My first assault was an old guy, too. Look at him. This is humiliating. Ow! What the hell? What's this about you grooming Petey to take over the family business? What? No! I can't believe you picked him over me! It's not like that! Fine! One day, I'm gonna start my own crew, and I will bury you, fat man! Anyhow, I realized Petey wasn't cut out for gangster. No sh Sherlock. But hey, now that I live in Regina and work in an office, maybe my son will finally follow in my footsteps. Actually, Pop, I'm gonna be a physicist. Yeah, right. Like you could ever be a gym teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. 
Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds say they helped him, they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. Drive, Jimmy, drive. What's it look like I'm doing? Giving birth? Oh, I can't see. Ow. Ow. Okay, there's definitely a wall on your right side. Screw it! We'll go on foot! <laughs> go on without me, Jimmy. Leave me to die. Oh, come on! You can't... I just need a case of beer! I can't believe you left me back there to die. We didn't make it. It's closed. Kill me now, Jimmy, please. Hey, McCool, when I agreed to move to Canada, nobody told me the government controls the liquor. They also control gambling, medical marijuana, and heroin injection sites. No matter what your vice, Canada's got you covered. Why can't I get a freaking bottle of booze after 9 p.m.? Jimmy, the days of drive through liquor at alcoholic enabling prices are behind you. Mother Canada is here to save you from yourself. For Canada, where no one has fun after 9 p.m. Except in Quebec. Oh, cheer up. One night without a few drinks ain't gonna kill ya. That ain't the point. Nobody tells me when I can and can't enjoy a drink. Well, looks like Mother Canada just did, ya big baby. Screw this, I got an idea. Back in Prohibition days, how did people get booze? Mama used to blow sailors for a bottle of gin. Which way to the docks? <laughs> Uh, for the last time, I didn't take your cheap gold-plated earrings that are only worth six bucks at the pawn shop. It's not that. It's my report card. I'm acing all my classes, straight Ds, except I got this one F. You're failing P.E.? <laughs> Who the hell fails Jim? Jim? I thought P.E. was a bathroom break. Anyway, if I fail, I fail the 11th grade. Coach says the only way I can pass is to sign up for an intramural sport. If you ask me, the only sport we're signing up for is hockey. It's got speed, blades, and fighting. I don't know. You're right. Look at the bright side. After you fail, you and Petey can be in the same grade. Yeah, you can be lab partners, sharing a locker, eating lunch at the nerd table. Stop it, stop it, I'll play hockey. Ah, but it's gonna suck to have three periods. <laughs> You boys do realize the liquor store's open again. We don't need them no more. Mother Canada can blow me. Well, don't come crying to me if drinking that crap makes you go blind. Jimmy, if we do go blind, can I get a monkey? Hey, this beer ain't half bad. Half bad? It's whole good. What a relief. Now we don't gotta throw all this out. Oh, for crying out loud, I am getting sick of you two sitting around drinking beer all day. You want to be bums? Go do it in the garage. We can't, because the garage is full of beer. Oh! Ow. Ow. Well, could you at least quit using our living room as your own personal clubhouse? Why are you getting on our case, Cook? We ain't hurting no one. Oh, no? What about the example you're setting for the kids? Nah, they know better than to sit around drinking like degenerates. What are you looking at, old man? You want to fight? I'll fucking fight ya! Yeah. I don't know why I didn't think of this place sooner. It's right next door and no one's lived here for months. It's gonna be perfect. Our own personal clubhouse. I always wanted to have a man cave. It wasn't, you know, an actual cave. Okay, let's work on the fundamentals. You mean skating and teamwork? Nah, forget all that. First off, both ends of your stick come in handy. <laughs> See? It's easy to make that one look accidental if you're keeping up appearances. Now later, when you're not, this is called shirting. <laughs> Do this on the street, you get five months. In here, you get five minutes. God, I love this game. <laughs> Once we get power, we should put in a big screen TV and a jukebox. And a bubble machine, Jimmy. Nothing says man cave like a bubble machine. 
I thought this place was empty. It's supposed to be. Come on. Hey, maybe it's one of them polter ghosts. You mean Geist. What the hell's a Geist ghost? Ah, there's nothing here. <laughs> How's it going, eh? Who the hell are you? And what are you doing in our clubhouse? I'm Mike, that's Ricky, and this here's Kenny. Thanks for giving me one of my beers. It's ghost beer now, Jimmy. Let it go. Something tells me you're not the new owners. Well, no. We smell fresh brew, door was open, The Matt said welcome. Would have been kind of rude not to come in, you know? Well, you guys are still trespassing. <sighs> come on, fellas. Let's go find a snowbank where we can drink in peace until the cops come. <laughs> Don't worry, Kenny. We'll find a warm place to drink this amazing beer. <laughs> really? You guys like it? Like it? It's the best. It's even better than what you get at the beer store. And I bet around here, we wouldn't have to worry about being cut off because we're all intoxicated. Or because they're closed. I know what that's like. You know what? Make yourself at home, boys. Cheers, fellas. Welcome to our club, where men are free to do whatever they want to do. What the hell are you doing, Cheech? I'm taking a dump on the floor. <clears throat> Freedom! <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll keep the party going till you guys get back, okay? <laughs> nice bunch of guys. Hey, McCool, what are you doing here? I felt bad about denying you and Cheetah's alcoholic tendencies the other night, so I'm here to show you that we Canadians still know how to have a good time. But not a long time, I have to work tomorrow. Sorry, McCool, we're drunk out. We've been partying with our neighbors all night. Great Giddy Lee! <laughs> Those are hosers! What the hell's a hoser? Allow me to enlighten you with this National Film Board of Canada educational film. The great Canadian hoser evolved under the harshest of winter conditions, but Homo hoserectus has proven himself a survivor. This meek creature got his name from having to flood or hose the ice after losing each hockey game. The hoser's inability to attract breeding partners has resulted in a steep decline in its population. Their struggle for survival is compounded by encroaching subcultures of emos, metrosexuals, and white people who like hip-hop. Today, sightings of this plaid-shirted nincompoop of the North are increasingly rare. For more information on the hoser, contact the Heritage Protection Council of Canada or visit your local beer store. Gentlemen, we are in the presence of a wonder of nature. <laughs> oh yeah, that was excellent. <laughs> I can't do hockey! Yes, you can! Just pretend the other team's a bunch of crazy broads at a shoe sale. Now get in there and take what's yours. How'd I do? Not bad. Next time, don't hold back. Okay, this game is called Brewski Roulette. One of these beers is loaded. So you randomly pick one and open it near your face. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you been hosed, you hoser. <laughs> now. Oh! No, no, no. This next game is choice. Okay. So, like, you take a nickel, eh? You put her between your cheeks, okay, and you get a clench on, right? And you just, like, you know, give her. <laughs> and that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you play bum darts. We have much to learn from your people. I think it went up. Oh. That's cheating. <laughs> Two minutes for spearing. That's it. You're a growing girl. Yeah, hit her! We're not playing in Europe. <gasps> oh, there you go. Now we're having fun. See you later.
later, Cook. We'll be next door, eh? Again? That's the third night this week. I know, eh? But for the first time since we moved here, I met some fellas I can really relate to. Look at yourself. You can't walk two steps without breaking into a sweat. You smell like the floor of a saloon. And if you say A one more time without meaning the first letter of the alphabet, I'll twist your nuts off. I can still go, right? <laughs> Come on, Cookie. I'm just going over there for a quick round of bum darts. Jesus, it's worse than I thought. Oh, it's not what you think. It's just a fun little game. Jimmy, think back to the old life. When you were hanging around the club with your friends, did you guys ever play games that involved your butts? <sighs> now you put it like that, it sounds all kinds of wrong. Warm up the TV. I'm staying in. But first, I got to throw out all our nickels. <laughs> Oh, hello. You must be one of Teresa's many, many boyfriends. Petey, it's me! Have we met before? I can't quite place you. Well, better get back to the books. Nice meeting you. <gasps> oh my god! <laughs> What's happening to me? <laughs> hey, Jimmy! Jimmy! Just ignore them and they'll go away. Oh. What's the opposite of ignore? Because that's what I'm about to do. What are you idiots doing? I'm trying to watch TV with my wife and you're breaking my windows. We just want you to come over, Jimmy. Kenny got fireworks. We're going to set him off in the house. Normally, I'd bust your head open, but you get a pass because you're mentally challenged. Ooh. Take off your dress, lady, and come party with some real men, eh? All right, I'm warning you now, and you only get one. <laughs> That's it! Yeah! Oh, Jimmy, I can't allow you to assault these gentlemen. What the hell are you doing? I reported the Hoser sighting to the Heritage Protection Council of Canada, and they have proclaimed this land to be a national preserve, a protected domain for the endangered Hoser peoples. Are you freaking serious? I'm as serious as an Adam Agoyan film. Oh, I think he just called Jimmy a gonad. They're here to stay, Jimmy, and you, I'm afraid, are trespassing. What? Jimmy, check out these birthday candles from Rome that Kenny gave me. And it ain't even my birthday. Ow! Ooh, that's smart. Yeah. Ow! Uh, Jesus, another one. Oh! I think that's the last one. Smart on! Those Romans know how to party. Uh-uh-uh! <sighs> Look at these freeloaders living off the government like a bunch of war widows. Those stinking widows get all the breaks. <laughs> Ow! What the hell? Hi, Pop. Petey, what are you doing up there? I'm observing the neighbors for an anthropology paper. Hosers in the mist. I've collected fascinating data on their nesting patterns. I'm hoping to analyze a sample of their droppings. Some of them droppings are mine. How long you been up there? This is day six. You're hiding up a tree, spying on three men. Is that something I need to know about you, kid? No, but could you empty my pee jug? Whoa! Turn off the... Yo, McCool, tell these morons to turn their music down. I wish I could, Jimmy, but Canadian classic rock from the 80s is their cultural birthright. Would you tell an Indian not to bang a drum? A Quebecer not to eat poutine? An Albertan not to marry his cousin? Oh, my parents were cousins. No, wait, siblings. Hey, Jimmy, I got someone who wants to say hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is awesome. Looking good, Mike. All right, if we can't touch these guys, we're just going to have to drive them out. You want me to get the car? No, I want you to turn on the hose. <laughs> Let the ice-related injuries begin. <gasps> Ow! Uh, Cheech, give me a hand here. Yeah, sure, Jimmy. I'll do... Whoa! Ah! Whoa! Ow! Hey! Wow! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, Jimmy. How the hell are you staying on your feet? The old beer cap on the boot. What a noble people. They use every part of the beer. All right. We're gonna cut their power, because if I gotta listen to Raise a Little Hell by Trooper one more time, I'm going on a shooting spree. 
What the? <laughs> Wily bastards. Time to play hardball. Nothing drives people out like good old toxic waste. That's probably what drove my third wife away. Yeah, Cheech, toxic waste in your Brooklyn apartment. Beauty, eh? It's like the Northern Lights landed. You get the beer, I'll get the Kim Mitchell. That's it! One of us has got to go. So here's the deal. One game of Brewski Roulette. Mano a hozo. If I win, you guys move away and never come back. Oh, you're on, eh? But if we win, we get your house. My house? All right, fine. Either way, I get you mooks out of my life. See you tomorrow. Tomorrow, and don't get cold feet. Oh, we will. I can't even feel my feet. What are you doing? You should be suiting up for the big game. Ah, I'm not playing. I'm out. I already got my PE credit. Are you kidding? You got a beautiful thing in your grasp, and I ain't letting you throw away my big chance. Your chance? How is this about you? Shut up and put on your skates, Frankenstein. If you like hockey so much, why don't you play? Because they won't let me. I don't want to give you the gory details, because there's a lot of them. But I got banned from hockey forever. Apparently, the only blades you can use are the ones in your skates. Aw, oh, Gina, I had no idea. Why would you? You're as dumb as a post. But you sure do shine on that ice. What a waste. Maybe I got one more game in me. You do? For you, I do. It's just the Moose Jaw Milkmaids, bunch of farmer's daughters. I'll cream them for you. You're the best, sis. All right, cut it out. Your beard's scratching me. <laughs> According to the official rules of Brewski Roulette, scratched in the bar at Jerry's Tavern in Thunder Bay, three beers in the case are loaded. First one to spray two beers in his face loses, eh? Sounds legit. Jimmy, no! Have you lost your freaking mind? You're betting our house on a stupid drinking game? I won't let you do it. Ooh, shh! Shut up, you drunken mooch. Cookies are right. They're baiting you, Jimmy. You can't win. Hosers always think three beers ahead. I gotta do this. I can't live this way no more. Also, I'm kind of thirsty. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> uh. ha! Nice one, Jimmy. <laughs> oh. Okay. No, just a uh, false alarm. It's down to four beers. Two beers, Jimmy. Two. Shut up, my cools. Guy. <laughs> Pack her up, eh? You've been hosed. Not so fast. I wanted to study the effects of imported beer on hoser physiology. Everyone knows a genuine hoser's body will reject any beer that isn't brewed in Canada. You've been drinking American beer. You hosers are posers. So what? Uh, bet's a bet, eh? And we won. That may be the case, but you will no longer enjoy the protective embrace of the Heritage Protection Council of Canada. Hosers are endangered, but goofball louts like you are a dime a dozen. You boys are on your own. Good day, eh? Well, Jimmy, looks like you better start packing. That was pathetic. I can't believe you lost! Who knew the Moose Jaw Milkmaids would be so freaking tough? Oh, look at that hot chick, eh? I'd sure like to slip a puck past her goalie. What did you say? Ah, finally disposed of that toxic waste, Jimmy? Yeah. Yeah, that's it, toxic waste. <laughs> How you 
doing? I'm Gina Falcone. You can put a gun to my head, but I ain't calling myself McDougal. My pop used to be the capo in a New York crime family. That was great. Everywhere I went, I was treated with respect. Hey, Gina, good to see you, kid. Here's a hundred. Get yourself a lollipop. I talked with that dentist of yours. You won't be getting any more cavities. That was all about the end, because anyway. my uncle Cheech started shooting his mouth off. The Don ordered a hit on him, but my pop didn't have the stones to do it. So while Pop was begging the Don to spare Cheech's life, I decided to make my bones and take Cheech out. And then Pop had to go and screw it up. I guess Pop did have stones, just not a lot of brains. And that's how we wound up in Lady Part Saskatchewan. It's okay to say it, sweetie. Regina. But if you think I like being here, you can f***ing... Oh, language! What the f***? What's wrong with you? Forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. Are your fingers tired at the end of a long day? They are. Are you still dialing the phone by hand? I am. Do you sometimes not point because you just can't be bothered? That's me. I hate pointing. With Superfinger, you'll never have to lift a finger again. Oh, that's handy. Oh. Fingery. <laughs> but wait, there's more. It also scratches, pokes, taps, and picks. It's super. Now 1-800-FINGER-ME-NOW. Welcome to Superfinger. Enter your credit card number now. Wait a minute. We don't have a credit card. Enter your credit card number now. I said I don't have a credit card. Do you take cash? Sure. Really? No. I'll give you a super finger. Jimmy, do you know what I do all day when you're at work? That's between you and Dr. Roz. I drive around town paying our bills in cash. I'm tired of living like this, and I'm sick of lugging this around. Don't you think it's time we got a credit card? What are you talking about? You got lots of those. None with my real name on them. Besides, McCool took them away. Like it's a crime to use someone else's credit card. Ah, you don't want one of them. What if someone steals it? Buys an Asian bride off the internet. You bad man! You promised better life! Jimmy, I want to live beyond our means, like normal people. All right, Cook. If you want a credit card so bad, I'll get you one. How the hell do you get a credit card? That's easy. You steal a lady's purse, you take her card. Bada boom, bada bing. I mean legitimately. I got nothing. Oh, for Christ's sake, you open a bank account! Fine! I'll dig up the nest egg and put it in a bank! You don't gotta yell. Cheech, get me a shovel. No problem. Ming, job what cha? Get your own damn shovel! In layman's terms, the annual percentage... Jeez, I've never been in a bank for more than three and a half minutes. Boy, I miss those days. Saul, what do you think, sir? I think I could take this place in about two and a half. I meant in terms of interest. Hey, I'm here, ain't I? So did you want the low risk interest rate of 0.1% or did you want to lock it in at six? So I can have 0.1 or 6%. That's right. I'll take the six and you better have it by Friday. Sorry, old habits. Your deposit slip? My life savings for a piece of paper and they call me a gangster. Holy shit, I'm rich! Cookie! I got you a little something. Yes! A credit card! My favorite piece of plastic that doesn't vibrate. Listen up, everyone. I learned a valuable lesson at the bank today. We're richer than we think. What are you talking about? It's easy. You had the nest egg I dug up from the yard with the money I stashed under the furnace minus the cash I sent to that Nigerian prince, and it equals... We're rich! <laughs> Don't 
you dare! Jimmy, you gotta try this caviar and truffle sandwich. It's 600 bucks every time I take a bite, and it tastes just like chicken. Nah, I'm too full from the narwhal soup. We didn't spend too much yesterday, did we? Not at all. We bought mostly essentials. Ain't that right, Percy? What the hell? My credit card's declined. Last time someone declined me, I put their head in a vice. Run it again. Same thing. What's the problem? What's the problem? I'll tell you the problem. I got some moron up my ass asking what the freaking problem is. I don't believe this. Jimmy, give me some cash. Any chance we could run a tab? A super finger. Oh, I so want one of those. Mr. McDougal, your money is locked in for a period of no less than six months due to the high interest rate. I explain this all to you in great detail. Isn't there anything you can do? How about a loan? You know we're good for it. I'm sorry, Mrs. McDougal, but our records indicate that you recently went on an insane spending spree and are now at significant credit risk. Jimmy, what are we gonna do? What did he say, Cook? Holy crap! We're broke? So now that all my money's locked up, I need you to float me for the next six months. I'm sorry, Jimmy, but it's against witness protection rules. After we set you up with your first job, your financial well-being is your own concern. I would love to offer you a personal loan. That's great! But I'm afraid I'm on a strict budget. Not only do I support Horse, myself, and a village of Bushman orphans, but every remaining dollar goes to my poor aging mother and her insanely expensive Bengay addiction. So you can't do nothing for me? Oh, contraire, my friend. I can give you something even better than money. More money? No. A money tree? No. A money factory? No. What the hell is better than money? If you see happiness or religion, I'm out of here. A vigorous pep talk. <laughs> At times like this, a man has to reach deep down inside himself to find out what makes him a man. To find wherein lies the root of his true character. Let me read you a letter from one of my orphans. <clears throat> Jimmy? Horse? Back to the zoo with you, mister. All right, everyone, listen up. It looks like we're having a small cash flow problem. If someone ain't paying up, I say go for the knees. Nah, Gina. Your mother thinks we gotta live economical for a while. So we're gonna have to cut back on a few things. Teresa, that means no new clothes. You mean no new clothes today, right? Gina, no betting on long shots. But old glue factory in the fourth is looking real good. And Cheech, no more booze for a while. Well, I had a good run. Someone spot me a bullet, I'll pay you back. This is great. Now we can implement all the green initiatives I've been suggesting. It'll force us to reduce our carbon footprint. We have to buy smaller shoes now, too? Screw this! I know how to make money. Teresa, you will not have sex for money. Mom! This is so unfair! Now you kids listen to your mother. I gotta run. I'm teeing off in an hour. Jimmy, you march right down to that tourism bureau and get your job back. And you can forget about golf. No more golf! Cheech, I'm calling sloppy seconds on that bullet. We have to ride the bus. We're turning into those people who bring bags to the store because they can't afford plastic. Mass transit is good for the environment and reduces CO2 emissions. This is so unfair. How could Daddy expect us to live on zero dollars a day? That's almost nothing. What's the matter with you two? You've been living off a of pop like forever. Me? I've been earning for myself since preschool. You want something in this life? You take it. Simple as that. She's right. Not about the stealing, of course, but there are things we can do to make our own money. Like collecting bottles for recycling. Really? Tell me more. Well, recycling saves resources, reduces smog... T -t 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 the money part. They pay for bottles, so we can earn money and save the planet at the same time. Driver, 
Take me to where we save the planet. Sure, it's one stop past where we end world hunger. Stupid kid. Morning. Um, Jimmy, I don't think you... Sorry, can't talk. A lot of work to do. Gotta put the old nose in the grindstone, so... Oh, I'm sorry, Jimmy, but didn't you quit? What? Quit? What are you, kidding? I love this job. I love whatever it is we, uh, do here. I'm sorry, but you were very clear that you wanted to terminate your employment. Toby, that's not my ass. My ass is in color. Jimmy... As much as I'd like to give you your job back, we've already hired someone else. <laughs> so fire him! No can do. Last time I did that, his union was all over me. So, did Toby give you your job back? Yeah, Cheech. My first day back and he gave me the day off. Well, looks like I gotta find some other job. Good thing you got the day off. You don't know what it's like out there, Jimmy. It's doggy -dog, dog People killing each other to climb the corporate ladder. You look the wrong way, somebody stabs you in the back. Hey, wait a minute. You know exactly what it's like out there. Yeah, I do. Who knows? Maybe I'll get one of them CEO jobs where I can screw up and ask for a bailout. I'm gonna get a job, too. Atta boy, Cheech. You think I got a good voice for phone sex? Yo, Ma, are we... Poor? No, Gina, we're not poor. We're just a little light right now. That's an actual thing? I thought it was something Deadbeat said when they don't want to pay. No, it's an actual thing. So, if you're not poor, why are you buying all this generic crap? Grumpy Green Giant, Hamburger Hindrance, Room Temperature Pockets? Who buys this stuff? Immigrants and hobos, honey. Don't forget the elderly. No one's talking to you, toots. <laughs> Teresa, just because it's called dumpster diving doesn't mean you actually have to dive. I know. You do. <laughs> How much did we make? Can you believe this is the only job we could get? I got 20 years experience running a family business, but no frickin' references. You know who'd have been a good reference? Don Gambini. He thought the world of you. Till you whacked him. Welcome to Blue Ball Ranch, boys. What we do here is extract bull semen for export. And how exactly do we do that? Same way you do at home. You mean in front of the window, with the neighbors watching? <laughs> oh! Ah, God, my arm is tired. Your arm? Thirty-two bucks, that's it? A broad who does the same job gets at least 80 bucks an hour. A hundred if she does it like Cheech. I still don't understand what your job is, Jimmy. I don't bring my work home, unless it gets on my shirt. Well, you gotta find something else. We're barely scraping by. We can't pay our bills and now Cheech is eating dog food. It makes my coat shiny. Cook, this is temporary. We'll get through it. Have I ever let you down? Not until now you haven't. What's this? A pawn shop ticket. I hawked my engagement ring to buy groceries. You did what? Well, someone has to provide for this family, and right now, that someone ain't you. I can't believe you sold it without talking to me. I was hungry. I couldn't think straight. I know things are bad, but look on the bright side. They can't possibly get worse. And they just got worse. Jesus, Jimmy, I'm blind. This is what we get for messing with them bulls. <laughs> Are you kidding me? What? I saw candles. I thought romance was in the air. Along with a hint of lavender. That's Cheech, burning furniture to stay warm. And you can forget fooling around. The mortgage company's breathing down our necks. If we don't pay on time, we lose the house. Ten minutes of sweaty groping ain't gonna help. Can't hurt. What? So now you won't sleep with me because I got no money? I won't sleep with you because I got no ring. It'd be a sin. What about our vows? For richer and for poorer. I'm an Italian girl from Brooklyn. I cross my fingers during the poorer part. What about during the obey part? Yeah, I'm sleeping on the couch, ain't I? Hey, where'd you get all that money? Do I ask you about your business? Listen, kid, you think you could loan me a few bucks? I might be able to help you out. 
You're a lifesaver. At 18%? What? That's crazy! That's highway robbery! That's... That's my girl. If you don't mind my saying, Pop, you're stooping pretty low borrowing money off a kid. Tell me about it, but I don't know what else to do. You can act like a man! Well, I don't know what else to do. Get out there, pull some jobs. There's banks, liquor stores, convenience stores, credit unions, and that's just robberies. You could be out there running numbers, pimping broad, selling protection, but instead you're sitting around like a schmuck. I don't even know you anymore. Jeez, maybe she's right. I got it! Ow! Oh, Jesus! Ah, Jimmy, I've been concerned about your descent into abject poverty. How are things? To be honest, which is hard for me around cops, not too good. You're not considering a return to a life of crime, are you? To be dishonest, which is way more up my alley, no, not at all. Take solace, Jimmy. Sweet Mother Canada stands at the bottom of the abyss, waiting to cradle you in the silky embrace of her social safety net. Say again, in American? Tomorrow, I want you to march down to the Service Canada office and apply for employment insurance. What the hell is that? It's just like unemployment insurance, except they put a positive spin on the name so the indigent don't feel like enormous blood-sucking leeches. Which, of course, they are not. Who sucked what? Trust me, Jimmy, your adopted nation has your back. For Canada, where you can get money for nothing, but the chicks aren't free! That didn't work. Next! Go on, Petey. I'm not sure about this. I love experiments. I just don't want to be experimented on. If you don't, Petey, they'll do it on an innocent little animal. Okay, okay, I'll do it. Great. How'd it go? I feel surprisingly fine. At first, I was scared, but after the probe, everything went dark That's and... That's great. Where do we get paid? Will there be any side effects from this? Absolutely not. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. It says here you quit your full-time job, which means you're ineligible for employment insurance. Who, me? I didn't quit. I quit. So you're telling me I don't even qualify for a handout? Next in line. Yeah, but next. All right. My wife don't respect me. My daughter thinks I'm a schmuck and I'm going to lose my house. Time to go back to work. And by work, I mean crime. Crime? Why didn't you think of that before? The answer was right in front of you. Sometimes I wonder about you, Jimmy. You know, I'm starting to think you care more about money than you do about saving the Earth. That's ridiculous. I totally care about the Earth. I also care about the Russian businessman who lives on the Earth and happens to need your kidney. My what? <gasps> Are you guys going to take long? Of course not. Now we must take organs while fresh. <laughs> Hey, sleepyhead. So, 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 so cold. Yeah, about that. I had a slight miscommunication with these guys. I thought they were just taking a kidney, but they wanted everything. Heart, lungs, even your doodad, which the one guy wanted for a necklace. What? But I couldn't let them do it. Oh, thank God. Petey, I may have been using your dumb infatuation with the Earth to get important things like money, and I'm sorry. I know, it's okay. In the end, you stuck up for your little brother, which warms my frozen heart. Your heart could have got me 10 grand, but I'm glad it's still inside you. Ah! You're freezing, you little freak! You're trying to kill me! Man, I've been keeping a lid on my criminal side so long, I feel rusty. Ah, that's better. I could rob that jewelry store or snatch that lady's purse Hell, I could do both. Rob that jewelry store, and then carry the jewels home in the purse. Good thinking, Jimmy boy. Nah, if I'm gonna do this, gotta be something big. Bingo. 
Oh, man, what the hell am I doing? What are you waiting for? Some idiot left the keys in a truck full of money. Don't do it, Jimmy. If you get caught, that will mean the end of your witness protection. I ain't getting caught. But if you do, I can no longer protect you. Like you need this Gavon to protect you. Jimmy, you would be endangering the lives of your family. McCool's right, Jimmy. Yeah, Pop, don't do it. It is a lot of money, though. Teresa! I'm just saying. What? You guys took all the good costumes. All right, I made up my mind. I'm pretty sure I can risk it. Jimmy, no! But I won't risk it for my family. I already put them through this once. I ain't gonna do it again. Hurry! For Canada! <laughs> Hurry up and steal the truck. I need booze money. I just hallucinated loot people crawling all over you. Hey! Some idiot left the keys in this truck. Well, Jimmy, I guess it's back to jerking bulls. Remember the old days when we were short on cash? We'd just throw a junior good fella under a bus and fleece the transit company for the insurance. Oh, yeah. The good old days. Can I wash these down with a little scotch? Nope. Doctor's orders. I'm sorry for everything I put you through, Cook. I got you a little something. Oh, Jimmy. I love you. Jesus Christ. Give me a bottle. I'm hallucinating again. 